Hi, I'm talking about VR map, which is a demo using OpenStreetMap uh, in WebVR. Uh, I'm Robert Kaiser, as uh, was already told. The slides are up online. If you go to slides.kyro.at, it's the first entry there right now. I just committed uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, first, to myself, uh, my nickname is Cairo, which is just a conglomerate of my uh, names, actually. Uh, I'm a Mozilla tech speaker. I've been in the Mozilla community for about 20 years now, or almost 20 years. Um, I'm a volunteer there. I'm not working for Mozilla. I'm a freelancer. Uh, I'm based in Vienna. And I'm not on most social networks, so don't search me for me on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, I'm on some smaller, and I'm on LinkedIn and GitHub, which are the uh, largest ones I'm on. If you look at the slides, there are links there, but uh, you will find me. So, what is this talk about? Most important things to take with, with you from the talk is the cross-device nature of WebVR or WebXR, uh, the ease of use of the A-Frame library, and the ability to use OpenStreetMap data for this and other uh, things you can use. First of all, what is WebXR or WebVR? WebVR is virtual reality powered by web technologies. So the VR content is actually running in the browser, but it can be viewed uh, as actual virtual reality. It's part of the WebXR device API, which is a proposed standard. Uh, there is a working group at the W3C that is working on that. And it's not completely uh, formalized yet, but uh, it's already implemented uh, in multiple browsers. It's working together with WebGL, Web Audio, and GamePad APIs, and a bit more. And as I said, it's implemented in multiple browsers. The, of the mainstream browsers, Firefox is the only one that has it in release yet right now. Uh, Windows releases of Firefox, you can just go in, launch the content, and you can view it in a, uh, with a HTC Vive or Oculus Rift. For the standalone headsets, like uh, this Oculus Go, you can use Firefox Reality, you can use the built-in Oculus browser, you can use Samsung Internet, which was built for the uh, Gear VR of Samsung, and uh, there's more in development. Chrome, as far as I know, has it in Canary behind the flag, but um, is working on it as well. So my demo, VR map, uses those APIs, web VR APIs, uh, and also pulls in live data from OpenStreetMap, which is basically Wikipedia for maps. It's not really intended to be the competitor to Google Maps, though you can do that as well. It's a collection of data that you can also use for doing a plain map, but you can use a, do a lot of other stuff with it because you have open access to uh, all that data. The demo is used, uh, usable in 2D mode on any modern browser, uh, but when you have a browser that supports WebVR and you have a headset, then you can actually use it in full VR with the headset and with the controllers. It's using the Mozilla A-Frame library. I'll come back to that. And it's pretty simple. It's about 80 uh, lines of HTML. We will take a short look at that. HTML, there uh, is a lot of boilerplate in there for, for an intro dialogue. And about 600 lines of JavaScript. Uh, a lot of that is very simple. So to not leave you waiting for too long, uh, I'll show you a little bit of what the, the demo is all about. Uh, I just need to find my mouse here. So um, OK, it, it reloads so that what I preloaded doesn't, doesn't work here. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, so when you start it up, you get this intro dialog. You can uh, select a few presets. This is in front of uh, the building I'm living in right now. And you can fly through the area. And all you get is you get some, some buildings, you get some trees. And 
if the data e exists, and you'll see that in the street there, you actually get different shapes of trees and uh, stuff like that. And the buildings have different heights. Uh, you can actually fl fly through that with a controller on a VR headset. You can fly through that with the uh, ESDW keys on uh, the keyboard on, in 2D mode like I'm doing here. Uh, and if you're using a mobile phone or a, or a tablet, uh, calling up vrmap.cairo.at, you can just uh, press somewhere and then you uh, fly in that direction you look at. So it, it scales very well. So that's uh, basically what, what the demo is about. How is it built? So one thing I had to do there is I wanted to make it very simple. So I assumed that the world is flat, and actually in two ways. There's no curvature, uh, and also there are no hills and valleys. But before the flat Earth enthusiasts retrace too much, I actually need to respect the uh, curvature of Earth because the ground tiles I'm using on the ground have different sizes depending uh, on uh, the latitude. So the uh, Mercato projection uh, that OpenStreetMap uses and that Google Maps used uh, in, in 2D mode uh, some time ago uh, actually has different sizes of tiles depending on the latitude. So that I respect because the coordinate system in virtual reality is actually in meters. So I need to calculate that. Uh, and it takes the standard rendering of an OpenStreetMap, which is called MapNIC, um, via my own servers to not put strain on the OpenStreetMap servers. And as a, you saw in the demo, uh, I'm rendering trees and I'm rendering buildings. Buildings are a bit obvious. The choice for trees was basically because it's the easiest object or one of the easiest objects you can use because they're always a single point uh, on the map that you uh, render those things at. And in addition, you have uh, some kind of little bit complex looking camera controller setup to support all different kinds of uh, controllers and to support the different devices with that for navigating. And as I said before, it uses the Mozilla A-Frame library. So that is actually the first thing that pulled me into doing something with all this. Because A-Frame makes it that simple to create your own virtual reality scenes. The thing I have here, uh, and uh, I'll tell you uh, a little bit about the code. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, that it, so that it's really readable. You uh, put into your HTML file, you, you put a, a, an include for, for that one JavaScript library, and then you put in some uh, tags. And what you see here, this a scene tag, so you put your virtual reality content, your, your scene, into this a scene tag. And inside that, you have your own uh, tags for, for different uh, objects. The ones I highlighted there, so you put uh, in spheres, you, uh, cubes, cylinders, whatever you uh, want with very simple uh, syntax. You just use attributes to say which position, which rotation, whatever, which color. And the ones I highlighted there uh, also show that for this cube, you can even have an animation, and you don't need to write any code other than a few HTML tags. Uh, I'll actually show you if I find the, the mouse again. OK, here it is. Um, I can actually show you what this thing looks like. Um, so here's the code, and the thing at the bottom you see there is, is the, that actual scene. It's very simple. It, it has a, a plane, a sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and the cube is animated, uh, as you saw in the code before. So it's, really, it, it's a really simple thing, but you don't need any real coding skills to get into that, which is really nice, because usually um, 
it's pretty complicated to do virtual reality stuff. So that inspired me, and I'll, I'll scale it uh, back a little bit. Uh, that inspired me to do stuff with it, and I'm also active in the OpenStreetMap project, so I thought it's a nice thing to pull those together. Uh, this, this scene, okay. Um, so the VR map demo needs a little bit more than, than this simple uh, A-frame example that um, I showed you there. It has an index HTML, which has uh, the basic setup with the controller, camera rig, uh, and with the start dialog that you saw there, and including the JavaScript files. Map.js has, has the basic setup, setup there. Conver conversions is the most boring thing and the most complicated thing of all, because there's a lot of coordinate conversions uh, involved between uh, the, the actual uh, degrees, the uh, coordinates, and the meters in the scene, and, and stuff like that. Position limit is the last thing I actually put in there, because I found out you can fly through the ground, and that's not really a good thing. So uh, I wrote a simple component, and I'll show you that, because it's a good example of uh, what a component is in A-frame. And there's tiles, trees, buildings, uh, JS, which are for those three kinds of objects. The tiles on the ground, which are just the basic map as a bitmap, the trees, and the buildings. It's up on GitHub uh, at uh, my VR map project. Uh, and I think it's, uh, at this point, it's best to take a look at some code. And thankfully, internet works, because I rebooted my laptop, and then the, the preloaded stuff was gone. Um, so this is the project. You see the, those files I mentioned, and it's not much more than those, those files. There's some CSS in there, and the presets JSON, but that's just a list of presets. Um, so the index HTML, um, that will, we will need to make a bit bigger. It has a lot of script includes, uh, because I'm using a few components. But other than that, there's the intro dialog, and here's the, the actual uh, scene. Let's see that we scroll it. Um, I need to actually scroll it this way so that we can see the whole A scene tag. So there's not, not much in there. The, the ground is just a workaround for um, for uh, a, a component that, that I'm using for uh, controllers to navigate. Uh, so don't pay too much attention to it right now. Then there's the uh, entity with ID map, which uh, is here. Uh, that has placeholders for the tiles and the items. So A entity is the neutral enclosement thing for any other objects, like a group or a div or something like that. And the really interesting thing in the HTML is the camera rig, which most importantly has a head. The head is 1.6 meters above, so that's x, y, z, uh, where its x is, is uh, horizontal, uh, y is actually vertical, and z is depth. So 1.6 meter uh, vertical means 1.6 meters above the ground. And so that's where the head is. Uh, that's a pretty standard thing in, in VR that you assume people are about 1.6 meters, that even for larger people, it's, it looks pretty OK. Uh, and then uh, there's, there's those components. I will not go into the mix-ins right now, um, but there's an entity for the left hand and an entity for the right hand, uh, which is if you have two controllers, you need uh, to have those uh, to act. So it's pretty simple. And one thing you, you see there is um, for the camera rig itself which is positioned at 0, 0, 0 when you start off. You have this position limit that says 
y min, so minimum on the y axis is zero. I put a max for, with 100 meters in there uh, just uh, for fun. There is no too good reason to restrict uh, how high you can go, but uh, it, it's good for, for demo purposes. And with that, I will show you how a simple A-frame component looks like. And it's really simple. You just say, register component with the position limit, which is the attribute you saw uh, before. And then ha you have a schema with which parameters does it take. It's just minimums, maximums for x, y, z. And then there's a tick function. And tick is being called every time the picture is updated. So it's the most simple thing you can do. Every time the picture is updated, we just check are we below the ground or above the, or outside of the um, limits that we set, and then we reset to the limit. And that's all this does. It does the same thing for every component. Uh, if uh, x min is, if the position is smaller than x min, then let's set the position to x min. There's a bit of magic, if you will, there to access the object behind the element that's mostly for speeding up. Uh, there's a 3GS object behind every element because um, A-Frame builds on 3GS as a library underneath. And it's faster to access things there than to go through uh, attributes uh, all the time. But otherwise, th this is all this component does. So it's very simple, but it also makes it easy to understand how you do comp uh, A-frame components. And uh, I'll just, there's one more file we, we should take a look at, and that's uh, the trees. And here you get the interesting thing of how you load stuff from OpenStreetMap. And that's this thing here. We just say node with natural equals tree. A node means a single point. OpenStreetMap has nodes, which are points, ways, which are connections of points. And then it has relations that can, are containers containing multiple objects. And all of those objects can have just uh, key values, like natural equals tree in this case. So we're, we just look for every point that is a tree. Uh, query that in our bounding box, which is the area we look at, and basically we then only handle those. And fun thing is you create objects in A-frame just like you create DOM objects in HTML. You just say, okay, let's create an element A entity, which is here. And then let's set a class, let's set, uh, so those, those datas are, are just for some optimization. We create an element trunk, we create an element uh, crown, and then we set uh, the, the height, which um, we actually set that in, in here. Uh, I, have, I have two different types of trees, a needle leaf and a, and a broad leaf. So the broad leaf is what the, the standard. And we set the geometry with the height. One thing you will see there is set attribute, usually when you're doing it in DOM, takes a string as an attribute value. As our attributes are interpreted by JavaScript library, it's actually faster if we set an object, it allows that. Uh, so there, there's a bit of an optimization there with that. But otherwise, it's pretty standard in how you, you can actually set a string there. It will do the right thing. It's just a little bit slower because it needs to parse the string. And then we say, for example, yeah, we, the, the trunk, will get a brownish color, the crown will get a greenish color, it's a sphere, the uh, trunk is a cylinder, 
uh, we set the, the position, we set the height of the, of the trunk, we set the radius of the crown. It, it's actually pretty easy to understand even if you're not a hardcore programmer. And I'm not a hardcore programmer, so, and I could do this. So, uh, and that, that's all it, it takes to do two different kinds of trees with a whole lot of different uh, sizes and, and um, crown sizes, uh, trunk sizes, heights, whatever. So code is pretty simple, which is nice, uh, which helps you build your own stuff based on it. So to recap, you saw that it's cross-device. You saw the 2D uh, stuff when I showed the demo. You can view it. You can actually fly through it yourself. You can try it on the Oculus Go I have with me, uh, if you like to. Ease of use of A-Frame, you saw uh, you just need a few HTML tags. And the ability to use OpenStreetMap data, those are the actual trees that people put into OpenStreetMap. In some re regions, they're good. In some regions, they're not so good. But mostly, they're pretty good nowadays. And please look at the code. Make it your own. There's two examples of people who took my, uh, my code already. Uh, one for positioning of uh, actual 3D models, which A-Frame can render. Uh, one that. Uh, made trains go on, on rails, and actually you can drive the tr uh, along the, tr uh, the train and, and see uh, what's around it. So please do that. Uh, and with that, do we have any questions on that? Thanks a lot. That was uh, really interesting. Um, so the data doesn't have to necessarily come from OpenStreetMap. You can have any any open data source, like I don't know, a file with bicycle pump stations that you can. Then... Sure. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So uh, my example uses OpenStreetMap data, but uh, you can use uh, whatever you like. Of course, you need need to care to convert it in some format that you can easily use from JavaScript. But otherwise, it, uh, you can use whatever you want. You can also mix data sources, of course, uh, if the licenses allow that. But for private, you can do that for sure. Uh, one more question: The lighting. How does do you can you influence the lighting, or, or is it just single light? So in in A frame, you can actually put tags in there that specify the light explicitly. Uh, actually, if you look in into uh, uh, there's an inspector for A frame, it will show you the standard light that is put on it. Because if you don't specify light, there's some standard in there. Uh, a-Frame makes it very easy because it, it just puts default in for things that you don't specify, but you can explicitly specify things like lights. Uh, you also can not specify a, a camera position, then it just assumes one by default, which is 000, zero, zero but, uh, and with, with actually a height of 1.6 meters as well. So you don't need to do things explicitly, you can, but you can explicitly put lights in there, even multiple lights and different light colors and whatever. Thanks. Um, can you use uh, 3JS or other libraries uh, with this uh, 3D scene? Yes, you can. Actually, the, the buildings, uh, I'm creating a 3GS shape and extruding that shape with the 3GS uh, functions. 
uh, and then wrapping it uh, or, or putting it into this uh, A-frame uh, entity. But you can fully access all the 3GS stuff directly if you like to. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, I don't see anyone. So, thank you again. <laughs>